So we'll continue our discussion on market structure. So if you remember in the last class, we were talking about the different kind of market structure and how the classification is being done in order to understand the different kind of market. One is the uh, substitution, the ease of entry and second is again the what is the nature of competition. So there are three parameters on, the, on that basis generally the markets are divided into different form. And from that if we remember the classification, we start with perfect competition, then you come to monopoly. So perfect competition and monopoly to extreme form of market structure and in between this monopolistic and oligopoly market structure comes. So we will start our discussion with a detail uh, on, uh, on particular market uh, structure and today we will talk about the, um, the market that is talks about the perfect competition. Its name suggests this is perfect competition, but we will check that whether it really there is a perfect competition or there is any kind of competition between this firm in this typical type of the market structure. So today uh, our uh, focus of our session will be on uh, features of perfect competition, what are the characteristics or feature of perfect competition, then we will see how the demand and revenue of a firm under perfect competitive market structure, then we will talk about the short term equilibrium, the price output determination whether the in the short term the firm is getting loss, the firm is incurring profit or the firm is just getting the normal profit. Then we will talk about the market supply and uh, specific firm supply analysis keeping the cost function or the cost analysis in the background. So to start with uh, perfect competition if you look at this the most basic form of the market structure. It is theoretical and hypothetical but the most ideal form of the market. So maybe this is the very basic form of market structure, it, it sounds theoretical, it looks hypothetical, but this is the most ideal form of the market. And why it is ideal maybe when we look at the characteristic, when we look at the feature, it suits both to the supplier and both to the uh, buyers and the consumer and that is why it uh, called as the ideal form of the market. But when it comes to the implementation and applicability of the such type of market structure, there is a difficulty and that is why if you look at there is no much uh, relevance like close relevance of this proper competitive market structure in the real life except in few cases. The term perfect competition refers to the setup condition prevailing in the market. So perfect competition market structure on the set of condition that prevails in the market and this that basically how the buyers and how the sellers they behave in the market. So as the name suggests and as we discussed also before couple of minutes that perfect competition if you look at the name suggests that it is a perfectly competitive market and all the com all the firms they compete with each other. But contrary to that there is a uh, there is a fact that in case of perfect competitive market structure there is complete absence of rivalry among the individual firms. So it is not perfect competition it is about rather the absence of the rivalry or absence of the competition among the individual firm. So in economic theory it has a meaning that is diametrically opposite to the everyday use of this term. So when you talk about perfect competition in really if you look at in reality this there should be the com the competition should be perfect. But if you look at there is complete absence of competition in the market. So when it takes this case into the economic theory uh, the meaning of the perfect competition is diametrically opposite to the everyday use in this uh, everyday use of this term. So in practice businessmen use the word competition as the synonymous for the rivalry. So competition and rivalry use as a synonym in practice and businessmen generally use this word but when it comes to the theory of market when you talk about the theory of the market structure perfect competition implies no rivalry among the firm. There is complete absence of competition among the firms and there is no rivalry, no competition in this kind of the market structure. So the name if you look at that call tells perfect competition, but in the reality the characteristic of the perfect competitive market says that there is absence of there is absence of competition, there is no competition at all in this form of the market. Now we will talk about the uh, characteristic of a perfect competitive market, what are, what are the characteristic of a perfect competitive market. The first and the foremost characteristic of a perfect competitive market is there are large number of buyers and sellers in the market. 
there are many firms who are producing the product in the market there are many sellers many consumers to buy the product so there are large number of buyers for the product and there is also large number of sellers of the product so in the background there are also large number of producer of the product because that leads to the again to the large number of sellers of the product so either you call it large number of consumer or producer or you can call it large number of buyers and sellers in the market the second uh, characteristic of perfect competition says that it's a homogeneous product it's homogeneous the meaning of homogeneous is that it's a uniform product all the firm they produce uniform products uh, uniform products in case of a perfect uh, competitive market so the products are not different from each other on the basis of the price on the basis of the quality or on the basis of the may be any type of uh, uh, product differentiation so homogeneous product is it should be uniform product but when you take this to the real world application whether whether number of firms they can produce the same kind of product uh, or maybe the homogeneous product maybe the answer is somehow close to no because the technology used by the firm is different maybe sometimes the raw material used by the firm is different the skill uh, skill people involved in producing the product they are also different maybe the skill is same but the individual is different so some amount of the difference is there between the uh, one firm's product to the other form products but as a whole it's a similar kind of product or it's a uniform kind of product and rather than uniform or homogeneous we can call it that the similar product that is produced by all the firms in the market but as theory say this is one of the characteristic of the perfect competitive market form that it's a homogeneous product then the third characteristic talks about perfect mobility of factor of production it means there is no restriction on the Uh, factor of production suppose you take the case of in labor the labor they may uh, the laborer may be one working in one firm they can move to the other firm they can move to the third firm uh, third firm and if possible they can again come back to the previous firm so there is perfect mobility of factor of production and mainly here we talk about the labor input and they move from one firm to another firm to do the same kind of job or maybe different kind of job but the end result is again same all the firms that are producing homogeneous product or all the firms that are producing the uniform or so called the similar product then the fourth characteristic is that it's free entry and free exit in the market all the firms there is no entry fee if you look at there is no entry fee there is no restriction in entering to the market anyone has the capability to produce and sell they will be there in the market from the supply side anybody who has the capability to uh, buy they will be there in the market as the buyers so from the demand side if someone has the capability to buy the product they generally there in the market there is free entry from them and similarly from the supply side also any producer or seller if they are ready to supply or they can ready to sell or they are ready to produce they should be there in the market because uh, they have the capability to sell in the market this is about the free entry similarly when it comes to free exit there is no if you look at this it's not uh, any trapping or anything that stops the uh, seller or the buyer to leave the market if the sellers they feels that they are not getting profit in the market or then um, or they they are operating in the market they are selling their product in the market and if they are not getting profit out of it they will prefer to exit the market and there is no restriction in exiting the market similarly for the buyer till the time they feel that the product is worth for them and they are getting it in a good market price generally they operate in the market or they uh sell from the uh, they generally uh, uh, buy it from the market but once they feel that the product is not worth buying or they don't require that product anymore they can always uh, st- uh, they can always come out of the market or they can always exit out of this market so if you look at there is no restriction in entering the market or there is no restriction also from the also from coming out of this market the fifth characteristic is perfect knowledge and what is this perfect knowledge we can reframe this as that that all the buyers and sellers they have perfect information about the or they have full information about the product about the price and about the sellers from whom they are buying the 
uh, product. Similarly, from the sellers, from the seller point of view also, they have full information about the price and they have full information about the product. So, the one of the maybe important characteristic of perfect competitive market is that the buyers and sellers they have the full information about the price of the product about the product and in general what is the market condition or what is the market uh, how the market is doing or as a whole how the what is the seller perspective or what is the buyer's perspective both the seller and buyers they have information about them then there is absence of collusion and artificial restraint means uh, if you look at since all the firms they are producing the same product and uh, there is absence of competition, somehow it may lead to the fact that they will collude and they will charge a higher price which is, uh, which is not again a uh, good sign for the market to grow because that way they will try to take charge a higher price uh, and uh, the buyer will be at the other end and if all the firms they are producing the same product, they, uh, the collision power is also more a strong over here. So, there is still in case of a characteristic market even if all the firms they are producing the product, one of the characteristic of the perfect competitive market is that they will not get into the collusion or there is no, uh, no form of any artificial restraint or uh, maybe there is no form uh, of uh, restraint, no form of control from the authority or any kind of organization in the market that is always the market forces the supply forces and demand forces they decides the they decides the course of action regarding the price regarding the product the last uh, characteristic which talks about the how the market functions whether there is a intervention from the government whether the authority gets into this or maybe uh, whether who is the who controls the demand forces and who controls the supply forces the fact is that in case of perfect competitive market structure, there is no government intervention at all. Uh, it is the demand forces, it is the supply forces, they decides the price, they decides the quantity. So, if you remember in one of our discussion when we are talking about the equilibrium that supply and demand forces, if the when the demand is equal to supply generally that is the case where we get the equilibrium and whenever there is a mismatch between the supply and demand generally uh, the buyers and the seller they am, they among themselves they again uh, uh, comes back to a situation which is again equilibrium and how they comes back to a situation when again equilibrium either they control the demand forces or they control the supply forces. So, in generally there is no uh, intervention from government rather the buyers and seller among themselves they decides the price they decides the output or maybe the supply forces rather than saying buyers and seller the supply forces and demand forces they decides what should be the price what should be the output and there is no form of intervention it is like the invisible hand principle uh, as we talk about in case of a different kind of economy. So, in case of perfect competitive market structure, it is a invisible hand principle that the market forces decides everything, what should be the price, what should be the product and what should be the market condition. So, if you look at uh, when you analyze or when you look at all the characteristic, uh, perfect competition is an uncommon phenomenon in the real business world. However, the actual market that approximate to the condition of perfect competitive mod model includes share market, securities and bond markets, local vegetable markets and agricultural pro product market to name few. So, it looks very uncommon when you talk about the characteristic that there is free entry, free exit or homogeneous product, but somehow if you could down the line if you can take out some of the restriction if you can generalize some a bit if you look uh, then in that case the actual market some of the actual market that uh, their feature or their characteristic closely resemble there is a resemblance with the perfect competitive market structure. So, in this case uh, if you look the local vegetable market or the agricultural product market uh, their product is not different from one another not much different. Suppose it is rice or a typical vegetable, they just produce that vegetable. Maybe someone is of a good quality, someone is of a bad quality, someone is small, someone is large, but in general it is a similar kind of product. So, we will talk more about the application of the perfect competition, the real one in the later part of the session, where we will see that okay, whether any typical market fits to be done in the 
proper competitive market. But in general, these are the markets like agricultural product market, local vegetable markets, uh, share market, bond and security market. They are somehow close to the uh, they have some feature which is uh, similarity with the perfect competitive market structure. And uh, uh, if you look at even if it is uncommon, still some form of market still they adopt it and they call it a perfect competitive form of a market. Okay. So, as we know this is a uncommon phenomena looks like from the characteristic as a whole this market form is a uncommon phenomenon, but as a whole when you talk about a perfect competitive model that has been a popular model used in economic theory due to analytical value as it provides the starting point and analytical framework for the pricing theory. So, if you look at maybe from the characteristic point of view it is like very uncommon, but when it comes about the model that gets used in the perfect competitive market structure that is most popular model and sometimes this serve as a base, base to the many of the other models and it is due to its analytical value as it provides the starting point and analytical framework for the pricing theory. So, then we will talk about that how what is the demand and what is the revenue of a competitive farm or as a industry as a whole or what should be the value of total revenue, how total revenue is calculated, what is the demand that we will check for the typically competitive farm. So, we will take the revenue part first and total revenue for a farm is selling price times the quantity of goods sold. So, total revenue is price multiplied by the quantity, if price is 10 rupees and quantity sold that is 100 units, total revenue will be uh, 1000 units because P is 10 and Q is 100. So, total revenue is in the very simple manner, it is nothing but the uh, uh, nothing but the uh, nothing but the total revenue or the total output what they uh, total revenue they get by selling the quantity that is produced by them or that is getting sold by them. Average revenue tell us how much revenue our farm receive for the typical unit sold. So, basically this is the average revenue that is revenue per unit of the output and average revenue is the total revenue divided by the quantity sold that is total revenue divided by Q. Then the revenue of the competitive farm in a perfect competition average revenue is equal to the price of the goods that is P Q by Q which comes to P and marginal revenue is the change in the total revenue from an additional unit sold and for a competitive farm the marginal revenue equals the price of the goods. So, if you look at in case of perfect competitive market structure the price is equal to the average revenue which is also equal to the marginal revenue. There is no difference between the average revenue, marginal revenue and price that we will check later again when we will take a numerical form, but for the timing the understanding is in case of uh, perfect competitive market structure the price is equal to average revenue which is equal to the marginal revenue. So, this is the uh, typical example that how we get the total revenue, average revenue and marginal revenue. Q is the quantity, the number of units sold, P is the price and total revenue is nothing but the price multiplied by quantity, average revenue is uh, that is total revenue divided by Q this because this is the per unit revenue and marginal revenue is the change in the total revenue with respect to change in the Q. So, if you take that why this P is equal to average P is equal to average revenue which is equal to marginal revenue, suppose total revenue is equal to P Q then uh, average revenue is total revenue by Q. So, this is P Q by Q and this comes as P and similarly marginal revenue is D T R that is by D Q then this is D P Q with respect to uh, Q and again if you simplify this then this is D Q D Q which is equal to P. So, price is equal to the average revenue which is equal to the marginal revenue in case of the uh, perfect competitive market structure. So, in order to determine uh, that uh, just how much each firm wants to sell or how much each firm is willing to offer uh, at prevailing market price we can analyze using the concept of cost. So, how much the firm is uh, how much the firm is willing to sell or how much the uh, each firm want to sell 
that can be uh, decided on the basis of the cost function or that can be decided on the basis of the prevailing price. So, we will analyze that by using the uh, concept of the cost. Then uh, the market demand curve for the whole industry and uh, if you remember in the previous class like when we are talking about that how much they want to sell or how much that depends always depends on the profit of the uh, whatever the profit they are getting. So, what is the profit over here? The profit is the difference between the total revenue and total cost. So, if you remember the point at which the profit is maximum, that is the point the firm generally wants to operate because they want to sell that much amount of output where they get the maximum profit. Then we will talk about the demand for the competitive price taker that is for the individual firm and for the market demand as a whole. So, the market demand curve if you look at the market demand curve this is the sum total of the demand from the all the firms and it is generally a standard downward sloping demand curve because we know that the demand curve is downward sloping. So, market demand curve is always downward sloping this is the summation of the in individual demand curve from the all the firms. The downward sloping curves gives a uh, the uh, price and quantity combination that is available to buyer such that the individual buyer is able to get the maximum amount of output at the existing price. And the demand curve of the individual firm is horizontal straight line showing that the uh, firm can sell infinite volume of output at the same price. So, in case of a competitive price taker the demand curve for the firm is the demand curve for the firm is straight line that is horizontal and um, uh, parallel to the x axis that is horizontal, horizontal axis and what is the significance of that? The significance for that is that whatever uh, amount the firm wants to sell they can sell at the same price. There is no uh, restriction on the uh, amount what they are going to sell because price has to be constant at that point any firms any amount they would like to sell they can sell it that typical market as a typical market and typical price. Now, what is market supply? Market supply is upward sloping giving various combination of price and output shows the maximum output any firm is willing to produce and supply at each specified price. Market supply curve is the horizontal summation of the individual supply curve. So, this is the demand for the competitive price taking firm. In the market panel it talks about the market industry as a whole panel 2 talks about the demand curve facing the price taker. So, supply is upward sloping demand is downward sloping the point at which demand and supply intersect each other that is the equilibrium point and corresponding to that we get the equilibrium quantity that is Q 0 and equilibrium price is P 0. Panel B is the demand curve facing generally facing a price taker or for an individual firm and as we know that the price is equal to uh, marginal revenue and also average revenue here. The demand curve is just a straight line. The price comes from a because individual firm not in a position to influence the price that is the reason the uh, generally all the firms they are the price taker firm because not a single buyer or not a single seller they generally influence the price. So, whatever the price uh, set by the market that is generally accepted by all the firms. So, none of the uh, sub, uh, none of the seller they fix up their price rather they accept whatever the price fixed by the market supply and market demand and they accept that as the market price. So, uh, here we get from the market supply and market demand curve we got the price and if you look at the uh, demand curve for the and at that price the firm can sell any amount. So, that is the reason the price is fixed and the quantity is uh, changing the quantity is just moving from one point to another point and the here that is D is equal to M R. Then we will talk about the profit maximization. Now, why this profit maximization comes into picture? Because the goal of the competitive firm is to maximize profit. The optimization problem for a firm is to always the maximize the profit with a minimum of cost. This means that the firm will uh, want to produce the quantity that maximize the difference between the total revenue and total cost or maybe the profit maximization occurs at the quantity where marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So, in the previous class if you remember we talked about uh, two way how the equilibrium can be achieved with the 
total cost and total revenue or how the profit maximization can take place with the help of total cost, total revenue, marginal cost and marginal revenue. And uh, using the total cost and total revenue approach, the maximum at which the difference is total cost and total revenue that is maximum that is the point the level of output the producer or the firm should produce. And secondly, the marginal cost and marginal revenue where it is equalization of the marginal cost and marginal revenue that is the point the profit maximization should take place. Now, uh, from there actually two condition comes from the profit maximization condition. One that is necessary condition marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and two is the sufficient condition that is marginal curve cuts the marginal revenue from the below. So, we we'll look for the detail that how we get this uh, equation marginal cost equal to marginal revenue and uh, marginal uh, cost should uh, uh, cut from the below at the point of okay, equilibrium. So, if you look at uh, now what is our uh, total revenue, total revenue is P Q and uh, total cost is maybe that is again it is a function of Q. Now, how to what is the profit? Profit is total revenue minus total cost. Now, what is the profit maximization condition? The profit maximization condition is when you maximize P, maximize the profit, it has to be equal to 0 or when you to maximize the profit, this derivative has to be equal to 0 first order of derivative. So, in this case, this is T T r by T c has to be equal to 0. So, this is del T r del q minus del T c del q has to be equal to 0 and what is the first order derivative of the uh, total revenue function that gives us the marginal revenue, what is the first order derivative of the total cost function that gives us the marginal cost. So, this has to be equal to 0 or marginal revenue has to be equal to 0, a marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost that is the first order condition. This is the first order condition for the profit maximization. Similarly, how we derive the second order condition? This uh, that is first order or the necessary condition and second order condition is the marginal curve cuts should marginal curve cuts marginal revenue from below. So, if we took that is the uh, in a algebraical solution, then it should be that the slope of the marginal cost should be greater than the slope of the marginal revenue curve at the point of equilibrium or at the point of profit maximization. To, to check this how we have to do, we have to take a second order derivative of the uh, profit function. So, that has to be less than 0. So, our, uh, uh, so this is total revenue minus total cost. So, this is del q square has to be less than 0. Then del square T r by del q square and del square T c by del q square has to be less than 0. So, this gives us the slope of marginal revenue, this gives us the slope of m c marginal cost. So, if you look at then the slope of marginal revenue minus slope of marginal cost has to be less than 0 and slope of if you simplify again the slope of marginal revenue has to be the slope of marginal cost. So, slope of marginal revenue is equal to less than the slope of marginal cost. So, the uh, necessary conditions talks about the marginal revenue has to be equal to the marginal cost and sufficient condition says that the marginal curve cuts the marginal revenue from the below. So, graphically if you look at then here P is equal to A r is equal to M r this is the demand curve, then A t c is the average total cost, A b c is the average variable cost and marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve and average variable cost at its minimum point. The firm maximizes the profit by producing the quantity at which the marginal cost is equal to the 
marginal revenue. So, corresponding to that if you look at the both the condition gets fulfilled that is condition 1 the marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and condition 2 that this point the slope of the MC is greater than the slope of MR. Now, we will just take a uh, numerical function in order to understand uh, how the profit maximization is done using this both this condition. So, we will take a TR function, we will take a TC function and then from there we will try to maximize the profit using the uh, sufficient condition and the necessity condition and see what is the profit level. So, if you look at this uh, total revenue and total cost. So, total revenue is 48 Q minus Q square total cost is 12 plus 16 q plus 3 q square. We need to calculate the output that maximize the profit and the amount of maximum profit. What we require now? We require the marginal revenue. So, marginal revenue is d t r by d q. So, that comes to 48 minus 2 q and from total cost we will find out the marginal cost that is d t c with respect to uh, q. So, that is 16 plus 6 q. First order conditions say that marginal revenue should be equal to the marginal cost. So, marginal revenue if it is equal to the marginal cost then 48 minus 2 q should be equal to 16 plus 6 q and if you uh, uh, simplify this then it comes to uh, okay. So, this comes to 6, 8. Okay. So, this comes to q is equal to 4. Okay. So, this is the quantity of output where the profit level is maximum. Now, in this case only the first order till now we have only checked about the first order condition for the profit maximization. Then we will check for the second order condition for the profit maximization. And what the uh, second order condition says? The second order condition says that del square pi by del q square has to be less than 0. So, if you take this del square pi at, uh, with respect to q, then that comes to minus 8 and which is less than 0. So, the second order condition also gets fulfilled here. The next task is once we fulfill both the profit maximizing condition, the next task is to find out what is the amount of profit when the output level is this and how we will find out that as we know that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost, we will find out the value of the total revenue. So, total revenue is uh, sub substituting the value which is q is equal to 4 and there we get a value that is uh, profit that is equal to 52. So, 52 is the profit if q is equal to 4 and in this case both the uh, first order and the second order condition gets fulfilled. So, for profit maximizing level at any point of time we need to first check whether the profit maximization condition has been mad, uh, fulfilled or not and after doing that then we need to find out that what is the level of output, what is the total revenue, what is the total co uh, total cost and hence for the what is the total profit or what is the profit the firm is getting. So, what is the thumb rule for this uh, profit maximization? If marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, we have to increase the quantity because the per unit, uh, per unit increase in the Q brings more revenue than the cost. When marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, there should be decrease in the quantity because uh, the per unit increase in the revenue is less than per unit increase in the cost when one more unit of output is added and if marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost then the profit is maximized. So, uh, profit maximization in the short run uh, if you are coming by coming specifically to the short run case an individual firm may either earn super normal profit or a normal profit or incur loss. So, either of these three situation can happen in case of short run individual firm can either earn a super normal profit. Let me tell you the super normal profit here is to the profit above the 
नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट और जस्ट द नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट और इनकर लॉसेस दिस डिपेंड्स ऑन द पोजिशन ऑफ द शॉर्ट रन कॉस्ट कर बिकॉज व्हाट इज द कॉस्ट कर ऑन दैट बेसिस इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिसाइडेड वेदर द इंडिविजुअल फार्म इज गोइंग टू गेट द सुपर नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट गोइंग टू गेट द नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट और जस्ट इनकर द लॉस बाय प्रोड्यूसिंग दैट लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट सो दिस थ्री पॉसिबिलिटी वेदर सुपर नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट और लॉस दैट कैन बी एनालाइज विद द हेल्प ऑफ थ्री शॉर्ट रन इक्लिब्रियम पोजिशन विल्स नाउ सी फॉर ऑल दिस थ्री केसेस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द कॉस्ट कॉर भाव वी कैन से हुई वन इज द सुपर नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट एंड हुई वन इज द नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट to start with we'll do it the super normal profit we'll see in which case generally the in the short run the individual farm gets the super normal profit this is the demand curve average revenue is equal to the marginal revenue this is the average cost and this is the marginal cost so this is our price now how will find whether in this case it's the super normal profit normal profit or the loss now what is the profit maximization condition the marginal revenue should be equal to the marginal cost and second the slope of mc should be greater than slope of marginal revenue curve so if you look at at this point e both the condition gets fulfilled and this is the profit maximizing level of the profit maximizing level of the uh, typical firm now when this num output is produced suppose this is q star now we need to check at q star level of output what the firm is getting so now how to find out that corresponding to this level of output we will find out what is the average cost and what is the average revenue so this is the average cost and this is the average revenue since average revenue is greater than average cost the firm is getting profit that is super normal profit and what is the amount of the super normal profit the area between the average revenue and the average cost so this is the super normal profit the firm is getting and how to reach to the super normal profit loss or the normal profit first we need to look at the equilibrium point the profit maximization condition where it gets fulfilled corresponding to that we need to look for the average revenue we need to look for the average cost and the difference between the average revenue and average cost that gives us the profit loss or the super normal profit so in this specific case since the average revenue is higher than the average cost the firm is getting the Uh, super normal profit then we'll see the uh, case of the uh, normal profit and ideally normal profit is what the revenue is just equal to the cost so this is our p which is also equal to the average revenue and the marginal revenue this is our average cost this is our marginal cost this is point e where both the condition gets fulfilled marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost and the slope of the mc is greater than the slope of mr curve this is the equilibrium point or the profit maximization point q star is the level of output and now we need to check whether it's normal profit super normal profit or loss corresponding to this if you find our average revenue is just equal to the average cost so there is no super normal profit no loss rather this is a normal profit because average revenue is just equal to the average cost then we'll see the uh, third case that is the case of the loss and in case of loss ideally how it should happen the loss should be where the cost is higher than the revenue so again we'll follow the same process we'll identify the demand curve that is average revenue is equal to the marginal revenue we'll take the average cost we'll to take the marginal cost we'll find the equilibrium point that is point e where marginal revenue is equal to the 
marginal cost and the slope of the MC is greater than the slope of the MR curve. Corresponding to that, we will find the level of output and corresponding to that level of, pound, um, level of output, now we will find out what is the profit loss or what is the uh, what is the outcome over here. So, corresponding to this, if you look at our average cost is greater than the average revenue. So, this is and the difference between the average cost is average revenue is this much that is between corresponding to the profit maximizing level of output and in this case since the average cost is greater than average revenue, the firm is incurring super normal loss. Okay. Now, these are three situation where we think that either the firm is getting super normal profit or the firm is getting the uh, normal profit or they are incurring loss. Is there any way where it, it all happens if the firm is producing, but there are some situation where the firm just get the subnormal profit and they shut down the operation. Now, we will see and that generally happen in case of the short term when the shutdown takes place, because the firm is not able to cover the variable cost of production also. Now, we will take a special case where the uh, uh, firm is getting subnormal profit and they are getting into a shutdown condition, because the price is not getting uh, price is uh, the variable cost is also not getting covered by the market price of the product. So, in the case of profit maximization in the short run, manager must take two decision whether to produce or to shut down. If shut down produce no output hires no variable inputs and if shut down firm loses the amount which is equal to the total fixed cost. If produce what is the optimal level of output and uh, then if firm does produce then how much and produce the amount that maximize the profit. Now, here focus is more when the firm when the firm should shut down, because you have already checked when they produce either they get profit loss or super normal profit. Now, if they short then in this case we need to check how much they should produce uh, in, in which level they should just shut down the operation. Now, what is profit margin? We need to understand this concept in order to understand the shutdown condition. So, profit margin or the average profit is the pi divided by q that is p minus average total cost q divided by q or we can say p minus ATC is the profit margin. Level of output that maximize the total profit occurs at a higher level than the output that maximize the profit or margin and generally managers should ignore profit margin when making the optimal decision. And what is the short run output decision? If price less than average variable cost, manager will shut down, they produce zero output, lose only total fixed cost and shut down price is generally the minimum of ABC. So, till the time the price is uh, equal to or greater than minimum of average variable cost, the firm will continue the production. The logic here is that at least they are covering the variable cost of production and if they continue in the same manner in the long run the possibility is that they can they will get some amount of profit. But in case of uh, price if it is less than minimum ABC, even they are not covering the variable cost for them it is profitable to shut down the uh, production operation as a whole. And they will produce the output, if they are producing they will produce the output where P is equal to M C as long as total revenue is greater than total variable cost or P is greater than the average variable cost. So, this P greater than average variable cost generally this is known at the shutdown uh, point or this is known as the shutdown condition for the firm in the short run. Now, if you summarize this uh, uh, short run output decision or maybe before uh, Summarizing this, let us take a look on the graphical analysis of this uh, uh, specific, uh, specific uh, situation or the special case, where the firm is not producing, they are evaluating the option whether to produce, if they are covering the just variable cost and when not covering the variable cost of production, they are thinking to shut down the operation. So, before that we will see what is the exit, what is the shutdown point graphically. 
we will just take a numerical to understand what is the price or how the price is decided to find out the uh, shutdown point or to find out the level of output where the firm should go for the shutdown. So, generally if we call this is the case of a subnormal profit. Okay. So, the first part is that is supply, this is demand, this from demand supply uh, equation we get the price and that is generally accepted by the firm and this is P star. Here the cost functions are bits different, here we also we are representing the average variable cost, we are representing the average cost and marginal cost curve intersect the average variable cost and average cost at its minimum point. This is the level of output. Okay. Now, what is this P star? So, if you look at here P is equal to minimum point of average variable cost. This is the level of output and here if you look at they are not getting any profit, any profit rather you can call it a subnormal profit because here the average revenue is just equal to the average variable cost not the entire average total cost. So, here the average revenue is equal to the average variable cost. So, this is average revenue, this is a marginal revenue and at this point. So, any price if it is less than P star, then the firm is going to shut down the operation, because after this it will not also cover the variable cost. So, any price which is less than P star, the firm is going to shut down the operation. Now, we will just take a numerical to understand this uh, short run condition. So, here we will take a cost function that is total cost which is equal to 1000 plus 200 q minus 20 q square plus 2 q q. Now, we need to find out below what price the product, uh, pro the product may the uh, or may be the firm decide to shut down its operation. Now, what is the marginal cost? marginal cost will take a first order derivative of total cost with respect to q. So, that comes to 200 minus 40 q plus 6 q square. Average variable cost is 200 uh, minus 200 minus 20 q plus 2 q square and to find out the shutdown point and what is the shutdown point? We, know, we have to find out the price, price, uh, price where it is equal to the minimum of average variable cost. Okay. But before that if you know the profit maximization always requires the equality of price is equal to the marginal cost. So, in this case what we can do? We can set the marginal cost which is equal to the ABC and we get if you set the marginal cost equal to the average variable cost, we get that this is marginal cost is 200 minus 40 q plus 6 q square that is equal to 200 minus 20 q plus 2 q square. So, that comes to 4 q square because this get cancelled 4, to, 4 q square minus 20 q which is equal to 0 and if you solve for q, solve for q we will get two value of q may be that is q is equal to 0 and q is equal to 5 and uh, if we find if you take q is equal to 5, then what is the profit maximizing condition say? The profit maximizing condition say p is equal to marginal cost which is equal to 150, because you pay, put the value of p in the marginal cost equation and that gives you the 150. Now, what is the interpretation here or when you put that q is equal to 0, then p is equal to m c which equal to 200. Now, how we can interpret from this two value of q? If price falls below 
150 firm should shut down its operation. Okay. So, any price if it is less than 150 then the firm should shut down the operation. So, this is not a specific case where we are talking about the normal profit, super normal profit or loss. This is the point where we talk about the uh, case where till the time the firm is at least covering their variable cost or the variable expenses from the market price, they will continue the production, but once they uh, they are not covering that they will prefer to shut down the operation in that case at least they are just taking care of the fixed cost not the variable cost. So, whatever we have discussed today like uh, it, whether it is the equilibrium of the firm, the equilibrium condition, the different kind of situation what the firm generally gets in case of short run that is profit loss and the uh, profit loss or super normal profit loss or normal profit and this typical case where the shutdown condition where we have analyzed the shutdown condition. If you summarize this uh, short run output decision, then generally if you look at uh, the average variable cost always tells us whether to produce and it tells us that if we can shut down if price falls below the minimum of the average variable cost. Short run marginal cost tells how much to produce and that tells us that if p is greater than minimum of abc produce the output where p is equal to smc because that is the equilibrium condition and the or the profit maximizing condition and average total cost tells how much profit or loss it produce because that depends upon the profit margin and if p minus atc by q if it is generally uh, positive then we get it a profit and if it is negative generally we get it a loss. So, today basically we cover about the uh, characteristic of the perfect competition and what is their applicability in the real world in a brief. Then we talked about the demand and revenue of a competitive firm in the short run, their equilibrium position, their profit maximization situation in the different cases and finally, the shutdown condition. So, in the next class we will talk about the supply curve and the supply behavior of the firm in the short run. We will talk about the price and output uh, decision of the long in the long run typically in a comp by a competitive firm and also we will talk about the long run supply in case of a constant cost industry, in, in case of a decreasing cost industry and in case of a increasing cost industry.